Hello, this is Jim Demarest, and I would like to introduce you to the Informatica Data Director version 9.7. So you'll see here uh, that it, we have taken on the uh, Informatica branding. Uh, also, if we click on the languages list, you'll see the languages that are uh, localized out of the box. Now, as in the past, uh, the IDD can be localized to any language you choose. These are just the languages out of the box, and I'm not sure which uh, version you're familiar with, uh, but with each release, we try and add a few more languages out of the box. Now, let's go ahead and log in. And you'll see the Dashboard tab is now labeled the Start tab but has basically the same functionality. Uh, we have our task list up here at the top that would list any tasks that are due. Uh, we can add additional components here. It has kind of a, a portal look and feel. Uh, so you can pick and choose and arrange uh, what order thing those appear in. And uh, also you'll see we've got a couple of extended components here in iGoogle Map that we could chart data as well as a Bing search window. There's also a custom tab here, Google search as well. So I'll try and point out where there are extensions uh, built into this. Now, uh, you'll notice also to the right of the logo, from right here, we can create master data. Instead of in older versions, we had to click on the data tab first before we could get to uh, creating. You can go ahead and create straight away and it will take you to the data tab and allow you to create that object. You can do the uh, same thing with search. Uh, you can click on the search there and uh, it will take you uh, straight away to a search window. Let me go ahead and cancel out of this. All right, so we'll go ahead and do, now notice the queries have been moved over to the right-hand side here. Uh, also, you notice a lot of the textual buttons have been changed to icons. Again, makes it a little more uh, international friendly, but you'll see the same functionality, uh, the same two types of queries that we've had in uh, previous versions, and the same sort of query functionality. So let me do an extended search and we'll do a search on the display name of Liz. And we'll see we get a number of hits here, Liz O'Brien, Bessie O'Brien, Beth O'Brien, uh, I guess that's Bessie Morrison, and Elizabeth O'Brien uh, in persons as well as organizations. So let's go ahead and open Liz O'Brien. We'll take a look at the uh, detail pane. Now again, depending on what release you're familiar with, You'll see that the uh, subject area children are now in a displayed in a vertical fashion. Before they used to be displayed in tabs, sort of horizontally, but as the number of subject area children grew, it became a little more difficult to display and, and maneuver. And so for that reason, we'll see that the subject area children are now listed and they can all be hidden and shown and uh, so that's the subject area children again we've got the uh, edit pencil here which allows you to go in and uh, make changes and apply those changes and we'll go ahead and hit save we could also hit send for approval if we wanted to start a workflow also you'll see our actions here uh, are listed and they all of the out-of-the-box actions have uh, shortcut keys available. Uh, so you can use keystrokes instead of having to use the mouse if you have users that prefer that. Again, we have a couple of extensions here as well, uh, test callback and Google search, but you'll see the basic functionality, the different views, as well as the different things that you can do with the record itself. Now, if you look over here on the left-hand side, we also have the different uh, views uh, available again in a vertical fashion so here's our cross-reference uh, this one's a little bit boring this record just came from a single source uh, and again you can highlight 
and choose whether you want to show pending uh, cross-references, those that haven't been approved yet. Uh, and then you can highlight for which source did that particular uh, column value come from. You can also see the history view. Again, if you're familiar with previous versions, you'll recognize the swim lanes and being able to set the uh, date range that you would like to see and see that the swim lane lanes adjust. You can also adjust them manually. And again, you can see different subject area children here in the history view as well. And then finally, uh, one, one thing they worked on very hard was the matches view. And so this will calculate uh, based on our configured match rules, uh, potential match candidates. So you'll see here straight away, we've got two potential match candidates. Again, we've got our current record that we were looking at and two potential match candidates. Uh, again, as always, we can click on the rule to see why these might be valid match candidates. Turns out we have a very loose rule here uh, based on party type. So we're matching persons to persons and organizations to organizations. And then from there, we have a fuzzy match on the person name, which is probably mapped to display name. And you can see here, we've highlighted uh, the columns that resulted in the match. All right. Uh, we can check a box here and notice it'll generate a match preview, uh, merge preview. So we can turn that on or we can turn that off. But the merge preview allows you to see what the resulting record would be if these two records were merged. And notice I can select more than one match candidate. So here's what my record would look like if all three of those rows were merged together. And also you'll see the ellipsis button here. So we can click on it, we can see the current trust score and we can override. So we can say, no, I happen to know for a fact she prefers to be called Beth. Uh, and so these are the values from the source records. We could also put in our own value as well and click on OK, and we would see that in the merge preview. All right, we can also manually add a candidate. So here it gives us the search window. So let's say, for example, uh, we want somebody from New York and we'll hit run source. And let's go ahead and we'll grab Albert here. We'll click on OK and we can see Albert in the list. Now again, we can add him to the results and see what those results would be. Uh, also, you'll see that we can show selected. So you can imagine here, um, if we have additional match candidates, say 10, 20, you know, hundreds, we can choose to only show the selected so we can narrow that match candidate list down if we would like to. And uh, you've got a select all checkbox here as well. So you can see how you can select all and deselect all. All right, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna select Albert again, and I'm gonna go to actions. Now it doesn't make sense to really merge Albert and Liz, but we might wanna create a relationship. So let's go ahead and click add relationship. It'll read our uh, entity types here. So we've got two persons and we've got a hierarchy of customer. Again, it's reading in our uh, hierarchy manager configuration. We've got a couple of different relationship types. We can declare these two as relatives or associates. So I'm gonna go ahead and make them relatives and we could put beginning and end dates in there if it was some sort of a contractual arrangement. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And you'll see the warning here. He doesn't currently uh, fit the applied filter. He's no longer a match candidate. We could always add him back if we wanted to. Go back to Add Candidate. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll go back to the uh, data view. Or we can go to Actions here and select Show Hierarchy and let's verify that relationship got created. Yep, sure enough, there is Albert and his relationship now uh, with Liz. 
and uh, the hierarchy manager uh, looks very similar to what it has in previous versions. You have the uh, zoom in and zoom out over here, the uh, pan control so you can move things around. Uh, again, depending on um, what version you're familiar with, in, in a fairly recent version, not specifically 9.7, we added this relationship flyover, which allows you to see for a given record the different relationships. And again, if you think about a large hierarchy with a lot of data, an individual entity may have 10, 20, you know, hundreds of relationships. So this provides an easier way of seeing those. Uh, each record can then be added or removed from the canvas. You can also manipulate the relationship as well as details. You can also resort this list so you can apply different sort orders as well as filters so you can see different hierarchies, different relationship types. So that is the relationship flyover again just kind of helps you manage this hierarchy view when you have a large number of entities. And then across the bottom, uh, again, similar to previous releases, you can kind of move around on the canvas with the navigation tab. Uh, you have the different layouts, so you can select and apply a different layout. You can also read in your hierarchy configuration and choose to filter on different hierarchies and within those hierarchies on different types. And then on the other tab, you have your legend here. Uh, in this case, we just have two entity types, household and person, and two relationship types, contains member and relative. So that is the IDD, the Informatica Data Director, version 9.7.